Hi, I'm Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com guides to Adobe Premiere Elements 15 and Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together. And here we are on the timeline in Premiere Elements 15. One of the most fun things to do with any video editing program is to add special effects. And there is a great library of special effects included with Premiere Elements. Now, once again, if you're working in Quick View, which is great for quickly assembling a video, you have a limited number of effects available. This is pretty much all you got. On the other hand, if you're in Expert View, you have a huge library of effects, including over 250 presets. You have Hollywood looks. These are color grading presets that make it very easy to give your, your video a filmic look or to create a certain atmosphere with your video. To add a effect, you simply select the category or browse through the categories by using these arrows at the top of the panel or even simply click on this little search button and type in whatever effect you're looking for. So for instance, I can look up Cartooner there it is. And when I add this effect to a clip simply by dragging it to the timeline and onto the clip, it applies the effect and now suddenly my video looks like a little cartoon. Once you add an effect to a clip, that clip will open up in what's called the applied effects panel. There it is. This is applied effects. And by the way, you can at any time select the clip on the timeline, come over here to applied effects. That's the one that has FX with a little pencil on it and you can make adjustments. Now there are a number of ways to make adjustments to any video effect or audio effect for that matter. Uh, you can open up all of the options and look how complicated these options are. But a number of effects include presets and presets are a great way to make changes or to customize the effect without having to deal with all of those little sliders and adjustments. So if you go up here to where it says animation, that's a preset and I have a number of cool presets in here. So I can select light cartoon and that changes the whole look of the video. I can select pencil test and suddenly it looks like it was drawn with a pencil. Isn't that cool? I mean, this affects the entire video here. You got a whole, you've gone from a, an actual live video to a pretty much an animation or a cartoon. We can go subtle, we can go vivid. To see the before and after, or in other words, to disable an effect temporarily, you just click on this little eyeball. When you click on the eyeball, it turns off the effect and you see what the video looked like before you added the effect. Click on it again and you can see the effect apply. To throw out an effect, you simply click on the little trash can icon here on the applied effects panel, or just press delete on your keyboard with it selected. These two effects, motion and opacity, are default effects and they will be applied to any video or any photo you have on your timeline. Whatever you select, regardless of whether an effect has been added to them. And opacity is really important. That's what creates your fade in and fade out. Motion is very important if you want to create, say, a pan and zoom across a photo. Here is where you will set up your customization for the position and the scale of your view of that particular photo. There are other ways to customize an effect and depending on what the effect is and what you're trying to do, you may find some of these other options more intuitive. So I'm going to select, for instance, an effects and I'm going to do a search here now on crop. And if I apply the crop effect to this clip, you see that it's going to crop the video within the video frame. It's going to cut it and I can adjust these sides of the crop or how much crop is taken off the picture by using these sliders to me that's not quite so intuitive so here's a trick for you select the effect on the applied effects panel and when it's selected you notice you get this little box around here and you can just set the crop effect settings simply by dragging on the corner of the box or on the sides of the box and you notice these changes we're making will be reflected there on the applied effects panel. So we're actually making adjustments here to each of these, but this is much more intuitive to me. You know what I mean? Like trying to get a precise crop and using these sliders is kind of difficult, but using this method seems much more, much more intuitive. I'll show you one more effect. Let's delete that one. By the way, you can add as many effects as you want to a clip. They'll just stack up here in applied effects and the order that they're stacked in may affect how the effect reacts to the other effects that are in the panel, but you can add as many effects as you'd like to a particular clip. I want to show you one thing, lens flare. 
lens flare. This is another one you can make adjustments to right on the panel. So there it is, the flare brightness, and there are settings for what kind of lens flare. You can see that big white spot there reflecting off the train, and we can control how bright it is, but we can also control its position. Now we can do that manually by just sort of scrubbing. That means you click and drag over these numbers or manually typing in these numbers. But look how much more intuitive it is if you select the effect here. And then once you do, look, there is the center of the flare represented by little crosshairs. And I can just simply drag it to wherever I want that lens flare to be. And of course, we can use keyframed animation, which we explain in great detail in the book to position that lens flare so that it stays in a certain location or moves around the video frame to create an animation any way we want. Lots to learn here and lots of great effects available here in Premiere Elements 15. If you want to know all about them, be sure to check out those wonderful moviepicks.com guides that are available on amazon.com or the tips and tutorials available at moviepicks. Come back here. We got part seven of of our eight part basic training coming up next where we're going to show you how to work with titles. I'm Steve Grizzetti.